for body sculpting as well. I'm sure you're not, not you're not going to talk about the body, right? Uh, not during the presentation, but okay. we can chat okay. if you have questions. Okay, sure. Okay, <laughs> so thank you very much. So it's all yours. You can start your presentation. I'm going to come back at that. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you for inviting me here today. I'm excited to uh, be discussing sculpture today. I, as mentioned, practice in Vancouver. I'm a dermatologist. Um, and if you have any questions, my uh, contact information is up here too. So feel free to reach out. These are my disclosures. I will be talking about Sculpta, which is a Galderma product, but I do work with a number of companies. So an overview. So um, what is Sculpta? We're going to talk about that today. We're going to discuss the mechanism of action of how Sculpta works, why and when I choose to use Sculpta. We're going to review some supporting research and then also injection recommendations, including um, reconstitution, plane of injection, um, results that we can see. And please feel free uh, to use the chat function and um, send any questions as we go along. So what is Sculptra? So Sculptra is a biostimulator and it has these micro particles of poly L lactic acid or PLLA, which I'll call it in the presentation. And as a polymer, it can generate a tissue response. It stimulates, it's biostimulatory. And that degree of response really varies by the amount and properties of the biomaterial used, the location, so the injection plane, how the um, product is injected. And then also there are patient characteristics that can influence the degree of response. The nice thing about Sculptra is it's a biostimulator, so stimulates your own collagen, but it also creates volume, and we'll talk about the benefits of that as well. So the label for Sculptra in Canada is that it is, so on label, it's suitable for increasing the volume of depressed areas, particularly to correct skin depression, such as skin creases, wrinkles, fold scars, and for skin aging. Um, and it's also suitable for large volume corrections of the signs of facial fat loss and lipoatrophy. And that was, uh, there was a lot of original research done in that realm as well. So Sculptra is supplied as a sterile freeze-dried powder in this clear glass vial. And each vial contains 150 milligrams of poly -L lactic acid. It also has the carboxymethyl cellulose and mannitol. So to, to kind of broadly describe PLLA, it's not a filler, it's a biostimulator. And that's, as mentioned, a substance, a polymer that leads to collagen production through this controlled inflammatory response. PLLA is biodegradable, it's biocompatible, it is synthetic, but it's been wild, widely used in many um, medical products over the years, pins, plates, screws for reconstructive surgery. Um, it can be used in soft tissue implants. And the one often I describe to patients is as suture material. And so in the dissolvable sutures, and I think for patients, they're like, oh yeah, I've had a suture before. You know, it sort of puts it, normalizes it. You know what, this is a um, uh, made up of poly -L lactic acid, which we can see in, in different products, including suture material. Um, I'll describe the mechanism and how it relates to Sculptra coming up here. Just so you know, the other uh, components in Sculptra, so the carboxymethyl cellulose is really just a suspending agent. It allows even distribution of the PLLA particles, and it's generally recognized as safe. It's in a number of um, different products. Um, the FDA use, you know, I am intradermal subcutaneous injections. This, this has been around for a while. And then mannitol is used to enhance that freeze drying. So it helps produce the stiff homogenous cake of the Sculptra. And these um, just dissolve in water and, and get absorbed. And I'll highlight that as well. So the mechanism of action of Sculptra, and, and this is um, important to review in a little bit more detail. So the current commercially available form of Sculptra consists of these microparticles of PLLA, and they measure 40 to 60 micrometers or so in diameter. So they're quite small um, and sorry, smaller than that even. And the size means that they are large enough to avoid phagocytosis by the dermal macrophages, um, and they can't pass through capillary walls, but they're small enough that they can be injected with needles as fine as 26 gauge. So sculptures reconstituted um, with water, and, and we'll talk about the reconstitution later, but after hydration, Sculptra is injected in the deep dermis or subcutaneous layer. Um, and the injected volume immediately fills out the wrinkles or can correct that volume defect. 
And within a few days after injection, the water, the other products, so the CMC, the mannitol, they're absorbed by the body, but the sculpture particles remain. Um, and at that point, you know, the wrinkles or volume defects appear uncorrected again. Subsequently, macrophages are recruited, they surround the sculptor particles, they fuse to the giant cells, they recruit fibroblasts, and that's when you start to get that deposition of collagen, which provides structure for the skin, and the wrinkles are gradually corrected. And then over time, the PLLA polymers break down through simple non-enzymatic hydrolysis to lactic acid monomers, and those are just metabolized to carbon dioxide and water um, and naturally eliminated from the body. And I, you know, sometimes patients want to know, well, how does this work? And so it's nice to have at least a few talking points, not in this much detail, but, you know, letting them know you know, the sculpture is laid down, it stimulates collagen, the collagen remains, and those PLLA polymers um, gradually um, get eliminated naturally. And then after the sculpture degrade, of course, that collagen deposit remains and you get the long lasting improvement of the wrinkles as well as the volume defects. And, you know, it's nice because it's been shown that you can stimulate type one collagen um, using sculpture. And this has been shown in biopsy studies that demonstrate PLA gradually promoting collagen growth. And you can see that under the microscope. And there's been other studies looking at the amount of collagens type one and three that's stimulated. And there's an increase of 66.5% of type one collagen even after three months. Um, and so that's um, a nice benefit that this has that long lasting stimulation of collagen. So why and when to use Sculptra? And I think it's un important to understand as you incorporate biostimulators or hyaluronic acid-based fillers, how do you make a choice of when to use Sculptra? So why Sculptra? So what do patients want? Um, patients really want to look good for their age. They want something commonly other than just line and wrinkle treatments. I get that a lot in my practice that this is, they're sort of like, well, what else is there? Um, and really a, a big goal for many is long lasting treatment results. And there was a survey done of 383 women who were considering anti-aging treatments in the next couple of years. And 75% of them surveyed said they preferred gradual results that last two years um, over immediate results lasting um, 12 months. And I think, you know, if they had the choice, longer lasting, something that, you know, uh, naturally stimulates collagen, a lot of patients are looking for that. Um, and in terms of Sculptra, it can create this youthful appearance. Um, it's also been shown to improve cutaneous thickness of the skin, which uh, in studies, particularly in the early studies looking at HIV lipoatrophy, up to four to seven millimeters increased thickness of skin was shown. And that's a, you know, an exciting thing about Sculptra that you can achieve that type of um, result. There's high levels of patient satisfaction, 80% in investigator satisfaction, 86.3% at 25 months. And it's been, uh, you know, a very long and established safety profile, um, given that it's approved by the FDA in 2009. So when to choose Sculptra over HA? And I think this is a good question to review because I'm often having this discussion with my patients, sort of even in my head about when am I gonna choose what and how do I choose? So PLLA, um, as we sort of highlighted, acts differently than traditional injectable fillers as new volume is generated in this gradual progressive manner through that fibroplasia. And PLLA, I often think about like replacing volume by considering sort of the entire face, its structural foundation from a three-dimensional perspective, rather than just focusing on individual lines and folds. And it's a, a really good choice for patients looking for that gradual improvement or those looking for that subtle yet pan facial improvement. I often talk about that with patients that I can, you know, help lift and in a more global way using um, Sculptra. The gradual results, though, may not make it the optimal choice for someone who's looking for an immediate or quick fix. Um, they've got an upcoming event. They want to look really good. There's somebody who you know wants to see um, like change immediately. Um, fillers might also be a better choice for someone who's looking for a more site-specific correction or localized improvement. But for someone who's wanting long lasting results in the study, 80% or more still saw full improvement at 25 months, which was the cutoff time for that study. So um, that long lasting improvement is a benefit. Fillers, you know, last 12 months or so on average, depending on the location and type of filler that you're using. 
So when not to use Sculptra, if someone has active or local inflammation or infection, they've got um, an area of hyperdynamic muscle. So, you know, around the perioral um, region, for example, history of keloid or hypertrophic scars, connective tissue disease, active immunologic disease, and of course, pregnancy or lactation. So some supporting research, um, this was from one of the, the pivotal trials around getting FDA approval and whatnot, and looking at um, Sculptra versus Cosmoplast, a collagen um, injectable, and the subject population had a wrinkle assessment score of two to four, and they were treated to have optimal correction of a wrinkle assessment score of one or zero. And these patients were treated in the nasolabial folds, um, and they were injected every three weeks with a maximum of four sessions in nine weeks. Um, and then there was an extension phase where they went out longer, of course, than that original um, time frame. So I'll go back here. So the evidence for Sculptra, you can see that there's this improvement in the wrinkle assessment score with Sculptra. And then at that cutoff time at month 13, you can see the desired improvement was seen and this was you know the interesting and exciting part is it lasted out to 25 months and then the study ended but it was stimulating collagen which is a long lasting thing so i tell patients you know two years or longer this is your own collagen yes as we age our collagen will dissipate or decrease um, but the nice thing about sculpture is it's stimulating that and that's a long lasting improvement Adverse events um, included swelling, redness, pain, bruising. Um, nodules and papules, papules were seen, but they were mild to moderate and self-resolved. And as I highlighted earlier, long lasting results. So investigators saw improvements in 86.3% of patients two years after treatment with Sculptra and 80% 80 of patients who received Sculptra still rated their results as good or excellent at 25 months. And that's, I think, one of the most exciting things about this treatment is you can achieve that long lasting and natural result. So on label reconstitution, um, the idea is you're going to remove the flip off cap um, and then clean the top with the antiseptic. Um, you can attach an 18 gauge needle and um, draw up five mils of sterile water into the syringe um, and introduce it. You wanna shake the vial vigorously by hand, or you can use a swirling agitator to sort of um, mix it for about one minute to dissolve the excipients. You wanna make sure to inspect that there's no lumps. Does it need to be shaken more? And you achieve this translucent suspension with some foam on the top. And then at that point, um, you would then uh, can uh, pull off the, um, withdraw the suspension and inject it using a 25 or 26 gauge um, sterile needle. There is um, a way to inject using a, uh, a more simple uh, two-step protocol. And I'm actually gonna skip through this and go to this next one because there is a reconstitution um, method where you can actually put in the five mils of water, shake it um, and leave it. Um, and basically within two hours, it can be injected. Before there was some controversy, how long does it need to sit for a week, two weeks? Um, but in fact, using it immediately, um, within sorry two hours is a possibility and when you do this shaking vigorously for one uh, minute dissolving the excipients it was shown that there was no impact on the physical chemical properties of the PLLA there's no difference in the presence of foam no degradation product so based on these results you can use the um, Sculptra um, within that quicker time frame, which is nice um, and more practical for those of us um, using it day to day in clinic. In terms of injection recommendations, um, the you know there's different decades and how I approach using Sculptra, Sculptra across these different decades really does vary. So in the 30s, um, younger patients, there's no bone resorption, there's beginning of fat pad deflation and a bit of skin laxity. And in this particular case, somebody who's looking for a little prevention, stimulation of collagen, they want a little bit of pull, you'll see patients often, you know, wanting this little pullback. And Sculptra is great for that option just to pull back along uh, this region. Um, I tend to do that more lateral injection for the, this younger age group, but I'll also do more superficial injections in this immediate subdermal plane to help with um, 
fine lines, wrinkles, skin laxity, um, overall aging prevention. Um, so that's sort of how we would approach the decade of the 30s. And the average number of vials is two to three. The decade of the 40s, this is the beginning of, um, you start to see more bone resorption, more deflation and descent of the fat pads and skin laxity. And so in this age range, I might inject in three different planes. So deeper in the supraperiosteal plane to get more lift, more subcutaneous to help volumize, and then also subdermal to help with some of the finer um, wrinkles, textural changes, et cetera. Um, and the average number of vials here might be three to four total. It really depends on the volume that you're treating. Uh, decades of 50s and above, uh, so more severe bone resorption, sagging, and again, similar three planes, superperiosteal, subcutaneous, and subdermal, and then you may require more vials, again, depending on the volume or surface area that's being treated. One thing that's interesting that I get from my patients um, who are older, and I tell them the mechanism, you know, hey, this, is, this stimulates collagen, and some of them is like, some of my patients say, you know, oh, I'm too old to stimulate collagen. I'm like, no, you're not like across all age ranges. Um, you can use sculptor younger patients, older patients. And there has been studies in postmenopausal women, average age of around 57, where they were able to see sculpture being stimulated, um, out and stimulating collagen, I should say, um, even out to 28 months. So it, it can work on different age ranges. One other thing I, I would just mention with, um, younger patients, as I talked about in the thirties and younger is I will sometimes use it, um, overall to sort of lift and in the skin to help, for example, with like acne scarring and other things, there's some literature around that, um, which is exciting. And so, uh, looking at how do you choose on volumes? Really? You want to have a homogenous coverage of the area to be treated there's some things that have been reported of one bottle per decade per session from the age of 30. Um, I don't really follow that. I sort of, it's individualized based on the patient and their needs. The number of sessions is another thing that can vary. Um, and, and on average patients might require two to three sessions to achieve their outcome. I also am variable about this. Some patients of mine do one session and they're super happy. And I'm like, great, we can revisit it whenever it might be in three months or six months, you know, the on label or typically described, um, mechanism is sort of a treatment. And then four to six weeks, you could repeat. Um, I find I'm more variable depending on the needs of the patient and how much lift or, um, volumization they like to achieve. Men is interesting. And I think certainly in the last few years, men and sculptor has played a bigger role in my practice. Um, and I think why that is in part is that men really uh, like the effect of sculptor and sometimes have some hesitancy around filler and looking unnatural or looking done. Whereas sculptor is something some of my male patients have been keen to get behind. It naturally stimulates collagen. They like that they are building their own collagen and you can tailor it specific to their needs. And I think with men, you do want to think about where you're treating them. Placement does matter. Um, you don't want to overly feminize a male face. And so Common areas I may treat in a male would be along the jawline, for example, sometimes in that medial cheek, cheek if it's hollow, um, as you can see in this patient, um, and to kind of lift out that nasolabial fold may be a common region, but I may not, you know, accentuate a lateral cheek, for example, um, they might not want that sort of light reflection and, and arched cheekbone. And so certainly with men, you want to think about placement, but it is a great option to introduce to male patients as well. Choice of plane by injection region. I love the temples for Sculptra. It is such a um, meaningful area, I find. You can do a super periosteal injection and I'll often do the one and one technique um, do a little bit deep in a super periosteal plane and also use a cannula um, and, and um, treat the temple region. There was a paper published just recently in dermatologic surgery in 2020, looking at the fact that with 
um, temple PLLA, you can actually lift eyelid skin. And the idea behind that makes many of my patients very excited. They're like, that sounds amazing to sort of volumize a hollow temple lift um, up that region. I, I like it. And it's of course, long lasting, which is meaningful. Malar region, you can be super periosteal or subcutaneous using a needle or cannula. Preauricular and jawline, this is actually a common region I will treat with um, Sculptra. And the goal here being to pull back. Um, and so I love it in front of the, uh, in the preauricular region along the jawline. Um, often I will be using a cannula um, in the subcutaneous plane if I'm sort of um, in this region, but actually on bone, I would use a needle at times. Submalar, this is that sort of subdermal for the etched in lines and to sort of help with um, pulling back a little bit in this region. I tend to use more commonly a cannula, but you can use a needle and I'll show a video of both. Piriform aperture and mentum you can treat. I tend to um, use a cannula more commonly, but you can use needle or cannula. And this is just an overview of the different regions where you may treat super periosteal in red and subcutaneous or subdermal in the um, image on the right. So volume loss, um, when you're targeting this particular type of treatment, tend to treat subcutaneous or super periosteal. Um, when you're injecting, stop injecting as the needle comes out, just to make sure you don't leave a clump of, of, of particles just at the sort of entry point. I can use needle or cannula and the volume again, really depends on the volume or the surface area that you're treating. Skin aging and laxity. Um, this is more of a subdermal injection uh, and you know, I, again, volume depends, but I actually love this for that just little bit of laxity that you get some of that, uh, fine lines, creepy skin that you can get. And I think Sculptor performs beautifully, um, for that and patients find it quite meaningful. Um, I also really like this sub region for my hollowed out, um, athletes or people who have very petite faces and they lose these fat pads quite readily. Sculptor is a nice one. Cause you don't want to volumize. You don't want to overly round a face, but you can support the tissues there. Injection recommendations. So consider aspiration before injection, uh, to avoid intravascular deposition. To maintain a more homogeneous suspension, you uh, you know, I'm typically myself or my nurse are agitating that syringe. If there's clogging, you can remove the needle, expel a bit of product, attach a new needle. And it happens to all of us if you inject a lot of Sculptra, you do you can get clog, clogging. So just knowing those techniques of keeping it agitated um, and then using a, just, I always have backup needles um, available. Avoid superficial injections to avoid papules or nodules at the injection site. This is just a little video um, courtesy of the GAIN program through Galderma where you can see them using a cannula to inject in this subdermal plane um, sculpture. And it's, you know, because it's a liquidy formulation, it, it injects very smoothly. And then the next video, you can also do the same thing, but using a needle. Um, and so it's kind of your comfort. You're, you can see you're in that subdermal plane. You can't see your needle, but you're a little bit deeper. Um, so sort of uh, just below there. And again, all that can really help support the tissue, stimulate collagen. Areas to avoid when injecting would be the eyelid and crow's feet area, any hyperdynamic area like the perioral area and periorbital area the red of the lips, um, as well as the forehead and nose region. Post-injection massage is recommended after Sculptra, and we review this with our patients. My nurse usually does some massage immediately after to demonstrate to the patient what the massage feels like, looks like. Um, you can use a cream to reduce the friction on the skin. Patients often like it. It's kind of soothing after the end of the treatment. Um, but the recommendation is massage for five minutes, five times per day for five days after treatment. And they can um, you sort of highlight to them the areas that they treated so they can be sure to um, massage in those areas. So facial assessment with Sculptra, you know, evaluating the regions that, that can be treated. So if you're looking at this patient, she's got great bone structure laterally. So this isn't a patient that I'm putting in a lot of volume because they've depleted, um, 
you know, they need a lot of lateral accentuation. However, um, they do have volume loss and lipoatrophy, um, particularly in that submalar region. Um, and you can see actually on the sort of side profile there where it's hollowed out. They also have this skin laxity and you can see those sort of accordion smile lines and there's lack of skin adherence. And this is when I was relating to that more superficial injection. This is where I love it for um, patients who have that little bit of laxity and it's almost like the skin is non-adherent. And so stimulating collagen underneath it can work beautifully. So when we're approaching the treatment, you think of the, the, the plan and the depth of injection influences what you're trying to achieve. So if they have um, bone resorption and or you're trying to uh, support in a deeper plane, that's when you might be looking at a superperiosteal injection, volume loss or lipoatrophy, subcutaneous, and then skin laxity, more that subdermal plane. And so for this patient, they had um, some periosteal injections, subcutaneous, as well as subdermal to help support in three different planes to create the outcome. The adverse reactions you can um, that are possible with Sculptra or PLLA include uh, edema, so swelling, bruising, uh, granuloma formation, product visibility or palpability, the, you know, granuloma and nodules are not common, but possible. And of course, vascular compromise uncommon, but you should be aware of the depth and plane of the different blood vessels. And there is a possibility. So understanding that uh, vascular anatomy is really critical with injecting any type of um, treatment, filler, polyalactic acid. Just briefly on nodules, because it does come up with Sculptra, um, there are non-inflammatory, more acute potential nodules. And then with time um, in the sort of two weeks plus, the possibility of nodules and or granulomas is, is there. And possible causes of nodules, well, if the product's too concentrated, so using smaller dilutions, and I think with time, um, with dilutions, we're... we're I'm more mindful of this, and, and this has um, limited the number of nodules we're seeing. Too much product injected in the same area. So, you know, a clump of, of PLLA, for example, the interval between sessions being too short, not massaging or dispersing the PLLA into the tissue. So that's why we do highlight the importance of massage to our patients. Injecting in hyperkinetic regions or injecting too superficially um, are all possible um, causes of not or contributions to nodule formation. So with nodules, um, the, you know, things that you can do massage, um, and if there's improvement, great follow up, no improvement, you can do saline solution or, or infiltration of the nodule itself. Um, and if that works great, if not the option of surgical, um, excision is there. I've never myself personally had to do this. These do tend to resolve with time and they don't tend to be too large or bothersome to the patient. Um, so, but there are different options and these are examples. Um, and these were located in areas where PLL shouldn't be used the forehead and the lower eyelid, but you certainly reduce your risk of nodules by not injecting in some of these areas. Nodules versus granulomas. Nodules appear one to two months after injection. They're typically um, single, small, like the size of a lentil or pea. Um, the border is well confined by this fibrous capsule, usually lasts that less than a year. Um, and you can see under histology that it's more of this foreign body reaction where you get little microspheres from the aggregates. Um, because it's more of this sort of collection, there's little effect of steroids, though at times I have injected Kenalon, but that's not the common treatment that you would do. Usually wait, um, watchful waiting. And I find most patients, because it's usually if they get one, and again, extremely uncommon, but if they get one time, or you could try the um, intralesional saline as, as well as subcision potentially. Granulomas are very uncommon, um, but delayed onset, typically six to 24 months, they can grow to the size of a bean. Um, if untreated, they, they do disappear with time, but they uh, can be treated with triamcinolone or 5-FU um, intralesional into the, the actual granuloma itself. So to summarize sort of Sculptra results and what you can achieve, um, a typical Sculptra program involves two or three treatment sessions every four to six weeks with one to two vials per session. And again, that completely varies based on the patient, their needs, um, how much 
lift or areas I'm trying to treat. Um, it's important to understand the mechanism of action, what you're trying to achieve, because that will influence sort of the layers and placement of your Sculptra. I will say because Sculptra is a biostimulator of your own collagen, it is incredibly forgiving. You're sort of putting in this um, global collagen stimulator. And so placement, you know, you want to, of course, achieve the best outcome for the patient, but because you're stimulating collagen, it um, it's not something where it's immediately visible, it's over time. Um, and, you know, I think patients appre appreciate that it's gradual and very natural. Um, and that's the next point that is gradual stimulates collagen and that natural looking effect. And I, you know, certainly have a number of patients who are coming into my office now asking about options. They're concerned about looking unnatural. They want, they're excited about the option of positive aging and prevention, but kind of very clear to me that they don't want to pursue certain things if it won't make them look like them or they're worried. And so I think Sculptra fits beautifully as an option for those patients. And durable results are visible and noticeable for at least 25 months. And this is an example of a patient before treatment and then after 25 months, and they had five vials over four sessions. And you can just see they look the same, they look like them, but they're just lifted and globally improved. Safety information we highlighted, but important to include and understand. And with that, I will open it up to questions. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Katie. That was that was awesome. I really enjoyed it. Uh, just a couple of questions I want to ask you uh, about the reconstitution. So you mentioned about the five cc. Uh, yes. Do you have do you have any uh, protocol like you're doing a different type of reconstitution if you want to do a different treatment plan, like make it make it more diluted or less diluted, something like that. Yes. And so the dilution that I highlighted was the on-label dilution. Um, but since you asked the question, I'll highlight sort of what I do um, myself. So certainly um, I tend to do more diluted than that. So up to eight or nine mils for a typical facial treatment, especially if I'm, you know, treating um, deep to lift, for example, or in the subcutaneous plane. And I will mix my Sculptra with um, either uh, saline or sterile water plus lidocaine. I do add lidocaine as well for comfort. Um, and then you asked about making it more dilute or less dilute. And so when I am treating for different indications, I will um, dilute further. So for example, treating areas on the body, I will commonly what I call double dilute. So I must go to a 16 cc dilution, um, especially for treating, for example, neck, chest region, inner aspect of the arms. I want it nice and dilute um, as there's some indication that there'll be a reduced risk of nodules. And there's lots of published literature around doing that further dilution. Um, awesome. And then I'll also consider doing it more dilute if I'm doing a more superficial injection, for example, mm -hmm. treating acne scars or much more superficial if I'm doing um, regions like that. So my dilution does um, vary from on label, but that's, mm -hmm. it sort of varies also based on the indication. Okay. And um, so do you have about the, the protocol of treatment? Do you, how, how do you, uh, is, maybe it's a very marketing question. How do you sell that to your patients? So do you go like with the package packages or do you just go treatment by treatment? So can I give you some idea how, how, how they, our students or our, our colleagues can sell these packages? Yeah, and I think it kind of depends on your business model and how you'd approach that. I don't tend to um, sell as packages and I, yeah. you know, it's an individual treatment. And then we say, you know, I'll see you back in a couple of months. Let's evaluate the treatment. I always take before photos, after photos. But really, as I see them up front, I say, listen, this is a treatment that mm -hmm. may require more than one session to achieve your desired outcome. So just know that we will do one. But if you don't see enough of an outcome, you know, we are going to need to do further treatment sessions. So I do set the stage that they may require more than one treatment up front. But I don't get the patients to commit to that up front because I do find that some patients do one or two sessions and they're thrilled. That's the degree of change they were looking for. And so mm -hmm. they don't they might pick to do a third or fourth in a year or two years. It kind of depends on that person and their stimulation of collagen. Awesome. So do, do you have any end goal? Like you say, okay, this is enough. I'm not going to inject you more. You're not going to get more result or you just go. You know, that's a great question. I think, you know, um, 
it really depends on, I guess, what we're trying to achieve. Right. And, and you have to be realistic too. We're stimulating collagen. It's not a facelift. Um, and yeah. so if somebody's like, I want to completely lift my jowl load and they've got a really heavy jowl and thick skin, I'm not going to be able to necessarily achieve that with Sculptra, but providing with each treatment, they're looking natural. We're getting continued improvement. There's no sort of limit to what we can do as long as it's fitting within their and my sort of goals as to, they look great. They look refreshed. They're still continuing to see improvement you can there's no you know you can continue to to stimulate collagen okay that's that's awesome uh and then uh, my, my understanding is that it depends on the amount of the volume you also decide to do uh deep injection superficial injection or multiple layer injection basically right yeah exactly so the areas that you're treating right um you know i do a multi-layered approach commonly where if i'm trying to do a temple i might do deep super periosteal but also some in the subcutaneous plane um mm -hmm. and or you know in the cheek area they might need a bit of lift deep but then i also want to target some of those little accordion lines and and laxity they have through here so i'm also fanning in some in this more superficial or subdermal like superficial subcutaneous plane Exactly. Uh, I don't know if anybody is always concerned about the vascular complication with filler injection, especially with the higher acid fillers. So how is the risk with the sculpture? Is there any risk of vascular complication? Have you ever heard or seen? So it has been reported vascular compromise from Sculptra. Um, you know, there is, I think, potentially a slightly reduced risk in the sense that it's more liquidy. So the ability to clog, yes, there's a particle in there, so it can. So there mm -hmm. have been reports of vascular compromise. So you still need to do all the techniques that we, we know, right? Understanding the plane of injecting, injecting slowly, not mm -hmm. throwing in a big bolus in one location. Um, yeah. If you do aspiration, um, aspirate you know it's a nice one this one you could actually get away with aspiration because it's so liquidy so you would be able to get flashback in that particular case so all of yeah. those techniques are important to do exactly uh, there's a question here so about uh, and i know that you say that we can now use it even immediately because my understanding was always about sculpture i have to dilute it at least 72 hours before no vigorous yes. sh shaking at the time of the dilution and then shaking before the injection but you mentioned something that you can do it even immediately, right? Can we just clarify yeah, that with us? It's actually um, really exciting. In the last um, you know, while, there's been more research that's come out that suggests that you can um, essentially do immediate use Sculptra. And, and again, off label this immediate use, but putting in, um, normally I would do it was put in four to five mils, shake it vigorously mm -hmm. for one minute, then add whatever further um, dilution you want, depending on what you're trying to achieve and, and can use it um, immediately in clinic. And that's been published. There's a few recent papers that have come out around this and lots of research into um the actual PLLA particles and were they was it safe and was there a change and and it was shown that it can be done and I think that's a huge boost for those of us and for any clinic that might not be a high volume sculpture injection practice um you may not have some ready and it's like the perfect patient that comes in and you're like oh, that hasn't been sitting there for two weeks or however long 72 hours right so um there is literature so um yeah happy to share that literature with you and or look it up but it's out there that you can use it more immediate use and it's been um reported at different conferences more commonly now exactly that was awesome that was awesome perfect uh let me just double check one more time Diane, there is, i don't see any other questions here i think it, yeah again it was awesome I, I, we all enjoyed it uh i see shauna is here as well shauna thank you for organizing and arranging this uh, awesome uh, topic and presentation um, is there any other present after is it the skin booster now or how it's going to go shana uh yeah so after this presentation we are going to go straight into uh the skin boosters presentation and then we have question and answers after that excellent okay let's do it Perfect. All right. I am going to go share my screen on skin boosters. Now you get me again. So I hope that's okay for the second oh. talk here. Okay. I'll tell you, I'm just going to share my next screen. Okay. Tight. Oh, that's a video. We'll show that after. Stop the share. Just going to get my other one. Bear with me. Uh, 
I just have to close down my uh, thing for one second, guys. All right, skin boosters, here we go. Okay, and zoom. There we go. Perfect. Okay. You should be able to see my screen now. Please let me know if you cannot. Um, for those of you just tuning in now, I'm Katie Belesne, dermatologist in Vancouver, and feel free to reach out if you have any additional questions at the end, chat me, Q&A me, um, and uh, make sure to uh, let me know if you have any questions. Okay, we're going to move on. So disclosures, I do work with a number of companies. I will be talking about Skin Boosters today, which is made by Galderma, and I'm excited to sort of uh, share with you my experience with Skin Boosters. So the outline, I'm going to discuss um, skin radiance. I uh, really enjoy this term, and I think lots of patients are looking for radiance, how to improve their skin quality. We're going to talk about that in the role for skin boosters. Uh, highlight NASHA technology, the skin boosters and smart click system, injection technique, some research, and then um, wrap up with some pearls and injection videos. So skin radiance. A refresh look. Um, this is a, an unmet need by many of our patients and 67% of women considering treatment stated that looking refreshed and improving their skin appearance was a primary treatment goal of their facial injectable treatment. And from different literature, it's been shown that good skin quality conveys well-being, fitness, good health, um, psychological balance, and youthfulness. And so, uh, it's something that many patients are, you know, seek, and that certainly in my clinic, I try to support with different treatments. Um, as mentioned, patients are looking for a treatment that can improve radiance and patients are, um, consider patients who are considering treatments are spending a significant a significant amount of money on skincare products. And they're also interested in ways to refresh their skin appearance with a facial injectable treatment. And there's a large market of patients who thinking about skin rejuven rejuvenation and radiance is important. So let's talk about NASHA and um, stabilized hyaluronic acid. So NASHA technology produces this um, stabilized HA gel and hyaluronic acid molecules are stabilized with chemical cross links. So they are more resistant to degradation. And the effect of that is that you get this long lasting form of HA that resembles natural HA, but lasts months versus days. So if you just injected, um, regular HA, it wouldn't last very long. So the cross linking, um, does allow us to have more longevity and injecting this stabilized HA has shown to increase HA levels within the skin itself. So NASH is uh, a unique technology that has um, a couple of features. There are synthetic crosslinks, but there's also these natural crosslinks, the entanglement of the HA chains. And the nice thing about it is that because of this um, natural crosslinks and entanglements, there's minimal uh, modification. So it is um, a more natural form of HA, if you will, in that there's, um, it's a minimally modified version. So skin boosters are designed with NASHA technology and they deliver this more stabilized HA where it's needed and they naturally um, integrate within the skin. So there are two, there's Vital and Vital Light. And Vital has been shown to improve skin smoothness, improve elasticity, and it improves the appearance in the lower cheek jawline as well as dorsal hands. Vital Light improves elasticity in the lower cheek jawline and in the face and upper neck. And the results are noticeable and they may last up to 12 months. These are the treatment areas. You've got lower cheek, upper neck, jawline, as well as dorsal hands, with dorsal hands, lower cheek, and jawline being approved for Vital, and Vital Light having the lower cheek, jawline, and upper neck region. So when to choose skin boosters? Um, it certainly can be helpful to improve the visible lines which appear when smiling and at rest. And, uh, you know, these little smile lines, it's one of my favorite treatments bar none for that region. Um, when the skin's lost elasticity, looks tired and worn to restore that plumpness and radiance to looking more hydrated. I find 
um, many patients want something like, I just want a little glow, something to hydrate. And um, the skin boosters is a great option for that. Many patients I find now are aware of hyaluronic acid in creams and topical skincare. And so when you talk to them about injecting hyaluronic acid just under the skin where um, it's needed to hydrate, to plump, to improve the skin quality, they are so eager and keen. And they're like, that makes sense to me that I understand why that would work. And they're keen around that option. Um, it can improve skin appearance without adding volume. Um, so certainly uh, for those who want the natural looking option, they don't want to look done. They don't want to change their facial shape, but they want um, improvement in their skin. Skin Boosters works. And then the skin that has become rough or has an uneven texture, um, it's also a really good option. You know, fine little lines. Um, we often talk about crepey skin. It can work well for that. For those who have little um, atrophic scars, it's one of my go-to um, treatments to help with um, acne scarring or little textural changes you may see as well. So the product, so the Vitel versus the Vitel Light, um, Vitel is 20 milligrams per ml and Vitel Light is 12 milligrams per ml. They're both soft um, hyaluronic acid types of formulations. They are mixed with lidocaine and I highlighted the intended use, but the Vitel for the um, smoothness, elasticity in the lower cheek jawline face and dorsal hands, and then Vital Light, good for lower cheek, jawline, and upper neck. I love it for the neck region. Um, the depth of injection is the dermal layer. With Vital, you're gonna be a little bit deeper because it's a bit more firm in comparison to Vital Light. Comes in a one mil um, syringe, and I will show um, the different types of uh, injection patterns with a needle. The um, treatment plan is it talks about three sessions, uh, two to four weeks apart for Vital Light, four weeks apart for uh, Vital. That's uh, the recommended treatment plan. I find it's variable with patients. Some patients similarly with this do one or two and are super thrilled. And um, But to know and to discuss with patients that in order to achieve the optimized outcome or complete um, sort of improvement in the area of need, they may require um, like a series of three or so to, to get there. Um, the maintenance treatment after that may be one session every six months or so, but results can vary. Uh, and there's different volumes that can be injected. Um, you can see results and significant improvements even as early as session one or at the end of session one, but even greater improvements are seen with time or the more sessions that you do, which of course makes sense. You're adding a little bit more, you're building on the initial treatment. What's really interesting, and, and I don't know if many of you have been um, had the opportunity to use the uh, Skin Boosters syringe, but it's actually a very unique and exciting technology where it has this smart click system. And when you click this little activation button in, you can get the this little click sound, um, which is an indicator and it delivers tiny little micro droplets for every little click that you hear. And it kind of um, makes it easier to inject in some ways because it's it's you'll hear the click 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 as you're injecting it's delivering these little tiny micro boluses in um, the areas and so it's very precise so you can focus on the technique how you're the area that you're treating without as much um, have to focus on the volume that you're injecting and it's a very um, ergonomic syringe as you're injecting there's different ways that you can inject the skin boosters. You can do micro punctures. You can do a short linear technique, um, just a linear thread or fan. I tend to mix it up with a little bit of everything, um, but I will show again some videos to, to highlight that. Typically injections are around one centimeter apart and dorsal hand, uh, for example, lower cheek jawline, something like this. I don't mark it out. It's a very forgiving treatment. You're kind of highlighting the regions that you want overall for skin quality. But then for example, if someone has a little etched in line, I might do my droplets a little bit closer together to target that specific area, but then globally do the treatment to improve um, quality in that region as well. The depth, uh, the Vital um, is typically in the deeper part of the dermis with the Vital light being more superficial. Um, and again, improving, working for skin quality, you want it in that dermal layer. You don't want to inject it too deep or you're going to lose some of the power of it to help you know, stimulate um, with hyaluronic acid right in that dermal layer. Um, and it's not, we're not using it for its lifting properties. So it doesn't need to be 
deeper for an injection. So what about research and some of the clinical invest um, uh, research that's been uh, done on this in clinical trials? So Vital has been studied looking at uh, different regions uh, and evaluator blinded placebo controlled with saline split phase study, three treatment sessions, four weeks apart where the patient was treated in the hands, cheeks um, as well. And improvement was seen up to 12 months after the initial treatment and it was very well tolerated. And you can see that um, the month one versus month five versus month 12, you know, patients were in that continually getting into that much improved um, category. And then similarly with the face, um, you can use that in the study, they were looking at needle or cannula, but um, improvement is seen. And with the further sessions, you can see further improvement. The um, clinic investigator assessment in the face or the hand in the treated side, the significant improvement was seen up to 36 weeks or nine months. Um, and patient in terms of their own assessment um, felt there was improvement again up to nine months, 36 weeks. And that's the global aesthetic improvement scale. And there was a study looking, um, an extension study looking at Vital Light, and over 90% had improvement in facial skin elasticity. 90% um, achieved global aesthetic improvement in the face, according to both the investigator and patient. And two thirds achieved aesthetic improvement in the upper neck at week 16. Um, and the neck, I think it's such an interesting time. And this is one of the things that's exciting about skin boosters is I've found um, in clinic since um, a lot of people have been off, we've switched to Zoom and these um, online platforms, the necks become a lot more focused. People are seeing their neck more. Um, there's been increased reports of tech neck, right? People looking down at devices and, and phones and um, more of this horizontal necklace lines and laxity. And so I think there's been a renewed interest in treating the neck and sort of options for that. And Vitel Light is such a, a straightforward but um, meaningful option for patients. Necks are hard to treat. It's hard to lift. It's hard to tighten, but a little bit of hydration in the skin, improving the skin quality. If they have a bit of line softening it, I, I do really like skin boosters for that region as well. High patient satisfaction, 96% of patients wanted continued treatment. Um, and there was a facial rejuvenation uh, study with the Vital where 100% had their treatment expectations met and 85% rated their treatment success as good or very good. This was looking at the study and, and um, comparing stabilized to non-stabilized HA, stabilized being the, the skin boosters. And you can see that um, improved effect at 12 weeks versus a non-stabilized HA, which has some improvement but, improvement, but not the same degree. This is an example of the treatment of the hands with Vital versus a non-stabilized HA. And like that's a meaningful difference. That is a nice uh, region to treat as well. This study um, was done by our colleague in Canada, Dr. Nicholas, and looking at uh, the role of HA fillers using micro droplet technique. And uh, just to highlight with that, um, you know, it, it, this study did look at actual hydration levels and patients were able to go from dry to moisturized and from very dry to dry using um, the skin boosters and the face, neck, and hands continuously improved in hydration levels with each consecutive visit. Um, the neck had the highest moisture content followed by the face and the hands. Um, and the face significant re results in hydration were seen after only one of the three treatment sessions. So in this study, they said, you know, even after one or two, you can see improvement in hydration based on these corneometer sc scores, which measures hydration and decrease in transepidermal water loss was seen as well. So I do think patients respond to um, and are excited about the option of a treatment that hydrates the skin dry winter. They're like, let's do something to kind of give my skin a boost. So face um, injection techniques, I'm, I want to talk about the pathophysiology of these little cheek lines. This region, um, as you can see in the image here, a lot of people are bothered by them and it's hard. You don't want to fill them out too much or it just widens the face or it's hard to do and look natural. Um, but we know from age 35 to 40, there's decreased skin hydration. You get degradation of collagen and elastic fibers and lose elasticity. 
Um, also, of course, there's bone and muscle atrophy, fat loss, and all of that can contribute. And at first you only see these little lines with smiling. And then with time, they get more fixed and visible and, and as mentioned, hard to treat. However, I skin boosters has been a really great option for me for these patients. Um, the optimal patient to treat with this would have lines that are minimal, but visible at rest. They're certainly visible with smiling, you know, typical age range I might be seeing is 35 to 65. They're not desiring volumization or that's been optimized. And then we're looking at using skin boosters to help in this region. And it's suitable for both men and women. When we're treating this, this area, you know, uh, it may require up to three sessions. Um, the results may be achieved after even two sessions, usually a session is one month apart or so. Um, I do have some patients who do one session and they're happy. And then we sort of say, okay, let's reevaluate in four to six months kind of thing. But typically they, ideally you do a series of three or so, um, the volume that's needed in that area can really vary depending on the degree of severity, the presentation, but may require one to three mils per treatment session. And a touch up treatments typically required within six to 12 months to maintain those results. And that can vary between patients. I do say that I am, you know, certainly with skin boosters, you're, you are um, poking the skin with a needle. It can stimulate collagen. And so even once the hyaluronic acid wears off, there is, in my opinion, some continued improvement because of that, uh, the mechanism of delivery, um, which does help in the long run. So sometimes, you know, when I'm doing little micro droplets, I'm like, yes, this is a good thing. Um, cause the more I'm poking, even though the patient's like, how many pokes is it? It's actually nice because it does stimulate that collagen for them. Um, injection technique, you can engage that smart click system, assess the direction of the collapsed skin, stretch the skin, and then do your injection. And there will be a little video introduce the needle at 30 degrees. And the idea with that is that you want to be in the correct plane in that deep um, dermal layer. Um, and you want to see the shape of the needle, but you don't want to actually see the needle, like the gray of the needle. If you're too superficial, you want to be a little bit deeper. Um, though I will say this product these products, Vitel and Vitalite are very forgiving. If you sometimes, if you inject and there's a little bit of almost a tiny bit of cobblestoning or a lump that you can see on the surface, you can lightly uh, massage the region to sort of blend it in. Um, so it is a, a soft hyaluronic acid. So that's a benefit of it. When you're injecting, so introduce 30 degrees, move the needle retrograde perpendicular to the cheek line, and you'll hear about three to four little clicks along the movement path as you pull back. And the uh, you wanna space those little boluses evenly, but as mentioned, sometimes I will do more in a particular region if they need a little bit more support. Um, you can see this is the sort of needle, and I'm hoping this is playing for you. You can see the little, uh, button that you can click in there and then you would pull the tissue back and you can put the needle in and inject along um, the uh, sort of perpendicular to the lines and you'll hear the click. It's a really lovely little syringe system and this is the plane that you'll be injecting in just in that deep dermis layer. Great. And oops, I'll go back. This is um, a live injection and this is uh, the GAIN. Uh, so the Galderma uh, Injection Network um, su supplied these videos from a presentation that was done. Um, but you can see the sort of laxity there and the little crinkles and lines. And so in this technique, you know, of course, cleanse the skin. I use chlorhexidine or Technicare and place uh, this a uh, person's doing the micro bolus technique, which is a great option too. You can put it in and do a linear thread with the um, sort of pulling back or simply do as this is done. Um, but it's very straightforward. I tend to change the needle quite frequently, like every sort of half syringe, just to make sure it's nice and sharp for the patient, which can minimize pain. Um, and just going along little tiny micro droplets. It's very quick and easy to do. Usually I have two syringes handing off with my nurse so that um, they can give me a fresh one with a new needle. And then I hand them the one when it's halfway through and then they switch it. So we're sort of switching to keep the needle um, fresh 
for at least every, as I mentioned, two needles per syringe on average, if not more, depends on the patient and area I'm treating. And then this is the other technique where you pull back and you hear the little click. So you can see the depth there and you can hear the click. And so it's so, it, it's very, very easy to do and, and meaningful for patients. Neck you can treat as well. Um, and as mentioned, I do really love the neck. This um, injector is just using a series of micro boluses. If I actually have a line itself, I will go into the line and do more of a linear thread. Plus I'll often layer some micro droplets into the anterior neck um, to help with overall quality of the skin. I've treated my own neck, I love it. Um, it's just a, a nice, a nice um, treatment, gentle, but meaningful. So injection pearls, mark the treatment area before starting the procedure. You could do this if you wanna highlight the regions you really wanna go after. Um, inject at rest, um, inject the needle almost parallel sort of that 30 degrees. That allows you to make sure you're in the right plane. Um, if the needle is visible, very superficial, um, withdraw, re reintroduce to get into the proper plane and then change your needle after delivery of about a half a mil of the product, um, just to reduce that, that discomfort. Post-treatment, cool packs if necessary. You can do a little light massage afterwards. I tell patients, even if they, sometimes you have a couple, I, the neck actually more commonly, I might see a little bit of that cobblestoning or tiny little bumps and I'll do some light massage. I tell patients, don't worry if you see a little bit of um, lumping or bumping in the beginning, that's normal. If you wanna do some light massage, that's okay. Um, and you know, do explain to them the treatment goals with this. It's progressive, it's gradual, but you'll get long lasting results. Um, I think when a patient does this treatment, you wanna make sure they have realistic expectations. This is an improvement in your skin quality. It's gonna help with hydration and elasticity, overall um, radiance as we described, but you know, you're not using this to do a big, lift. You're not going to lift out a jowl or fill in a, a you know, a deep etched in nasal labial fold. This is more focusing on quality. And, and most patients are keen on that um, and, and eager to see the outcome for that, knowing though, this is the outcome you should achieve with it. Um, but many of my patients are coming in specifically looking for that radiance or skin quality treatment. Um, patients can cover bruising up with makeup if necessary. Uh, the downtime I, in my experience has not been too long. Of course, bruising being the, the main thing that's potential when using a needle in these areas. I do apply a topical numbing cream prior to doing the treatment of patients want. We usually do a 30% lidocaine in a plasticized base. Um, and that's applied in advance of the treatment if patients want a little extra numbing. Patient outcomes, this is, you know, an example of a before and after, more before and afters. And I will say I do achieve these results in my patients, specifically in this area. It's really nice. Um, I find it good for textural changes, especially some of those little minor atrophic um, scars, little tiny fine lines etched in things. That's really nice. And then that hydration quality. You can see again, more improvement in this, uh, these before and afters. I mean, these are meaningful changes for patients. It's very hard to treat these, these um, little more superficial skin quality changes. This is an image courtesy of Kent Remington. I think the side angle helps. And these are mostly looking at the skin, these little skin fine lines. But I will say that many of my patients will comment to me that their skin feels better. There's something they're like, it's hard to describe it. It just feels better. Maybe it's the quality of strengthening the skin or the hydration or the smoothness effect. Um, but patients, I do appreciate that in there. I've had a few be like, it's hard to tangibly describe what it is. Like I see some of these changes, like you can see in this before and after, but there's also just a quality improvement. I just wanted to include this slide just to explain how I incorporate skin boosters in my practice, which has been a successful addition. And when I talk about 
um, treatment planning and cosmetic goals, you know, I start off by reviewing the patient goals. You know, what, what are you looking for? And many of my patients will come in keen uh, on positive aging, right? Prevention. They, you know, often frequently I'll hear like, I, I want to look natural. I don't want to look done. I want to look rested. I feel like I look tired. Um, and these sorts of goals and, and, um, things that patients will mention to me, you know, skin boosters does fit in well, they, they are wanting to improve their skin quality. They're wanting to give a bit of glow. Um, and so with that, we talk about long-term, um, treatment plan. So what are, what are the options for treatment? And then I often prioritize with the patient. So what can we focus on now, you know, what's our main goal and what are things that we can look towards doing in the future and sort of, you know, what's on our yearly treatment plan, what's on our six month treatment plan. As it relates to how I incorporate skin boosters into the treatment plan, for me, it falls under skin quality and complexion concerns. And it's interesting because it is a hyaluronic acid, right? And people sometimes think filler, but in fact, I talk about this totally separately. I talk about it in the context of skin quality or complexion. And so as we're reviewing that, if that's a concern of a patient, we're often talking about things like skincare to help their skin quality, complexion, maybe lasers, devices, microneedling. And then my, you know, I have a separate line item, which we would discuss, which is um, skin boosters or these micro droplets of hyaluronic acid to improve the quality of the skin, um, the hydration, uh, those sorts of things give that radiance. And it is interesting to me that there's a number of patients who come in who might say off the bat, I am not interested in injectables, but when I highlight skin boosters or what the role can be for improving skin quality. They're like, Oh, that's interesting. I definitely would like to do that. Or I'm interested in that. And I think it's sort of discussing what its role is and how we're using it. Not going to change your facial shape. We're using this to work on plasticity, hydration, quality of the skin, and patients really respond well to that in their treatment plan. There may also be neuromodulators. There may also be fillers, um, uh, you know, biostimulators, sculpture, all of that, there's skin tightening. You can, you can have include all of those other things. Um, and they can all work in conjunction. Skin boosters can be done at the same time as doing deeper filler for lift, um, neuromodulators, your disport, your, your sculpture, whatever it may be, you can do them together. Um, but it's nice because they act synergistically and at different levels. Patient selection for these treatments, certainly a patient, um, male or female, I think it responds really well to most skin types. Younger patients are commonly concerned about skin quality and skin boosters works well for that. Patients, as I mentioned, who are focused on complexion treatments only. And, you know, I certainly get a number of patients who are injection naive. They've never had injectables before, or they're averse to it. They're like, it's not something I'm interested in, but I do find that highlighting the role of skin boosters for that patient group is a positive one. Patients who only want natural or conservative. I think this is great. It doesn't again, change shape. It's working on quality. I also like it for patients who've had lots of treatment, patients who've done multiple treatments. They're, you know, they've had their filler. This is a nice treatment that's natural. It's gonna work on something that I like to achieve with them, which is skin quality. Older patients, um, in particular, some patients are find that um, as you get older, your skin gets more dehydrated. And so um, more of these little etched in lines. And so skin quality, hydration, um, fine lines, the skin boosters will work, will work well. And the other big advantage is that it's very complementary to the other cosmetic treatment. So it doesn't mean you can't do your other treatments or you're doing an either or situation Skin boosters really doesn't cannibalize from the other treatments that we do. It's additive or synergistic to them. And then looking for a more refreshed or radiant look. Safety profile, very similar to other um, injectables that we do. Bruising, redness, um, potentially some swelling or tenderness. Um, usually it resolves uh, within a few days after injection. The safety information here, of course, if someone has a known hypersensitivity, so to summarize, skin boosters, um, really great for improving that texture, injectable HA, but using that um, NASHA technology 
it's a very natural way to um, deliver hyaluronic acid, um, helping with skin quality for up to 12 months after treatment. Uh, results are long lasting. It's been around for a long time in a number of different areas in the world. Good safety profile. I love the smart flick. If you haven't tried it, it's, it's pretty fun, especially when you first start using it, you explain to the patient before you can hear a little click that's normal. Um, and as mentioned, I love it as a standalone treatment, but I find the biggest role in my practice is it's a complementary treatment. So they might come in for their neuromodulator, their filler and their skin boosters. And it really does fit with the other treatments that we do now going to open it up to questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, uh, that was very interesting as well, this topic. Uh, so I skin booster is one of the treatment that I do. I can't hear you yet. Up. Are you on mute? Let me see. Am I good? I don't know if anyone no. else can hear you. Uh, can you hear I me can now? I hear him. Yeah. Oh, there. Can I hear you now? Can you hear me now? Yeah, sorry, I got you. That was my bad. I had muted it for the uh, video and then I didn't some... have it on. Is it still mute or can I can't? No, no, I can hear you. Okay, how about now? Can you hear Perfect. me? Okay, good. Yeah, that was really interesting. So I, I honestly, I do Skin Booster all the time. I really enjoy it. As you mentioned, it's a very, uh, very non-invasive, non-aggressive treatment. Has a very good uh, effect on the quality of the skin. Uh, just a couple of questions uh, about the Skin Booster. The one the question is, are you using that for the smoker line? Do you inject it directly to the smoker lines? Um, yeah, that was the first question. Yeah. So off label all the time. Um, it's actually one of my yeah. preferred treatments for these little etched in barcode yeah. smokers lines. And what I like about it is it, um, it doesn't fill. Like I find if you try and fill with a filler, you can get that Marge Simpson or overly puffy upper lip. And so you yep. want to be really conservative with treatments in those upper lip lines to make sure it looks natural. I get bothered when you see the overly inflated lip trying to soften the lines, but it just, it doesn't work. So I do really love skin boosters for that region. Okay. And uh, something that I actually, I might, that was my experience. So it doesn't get some, your, your idea. When you're injecting to the neck, have you ever seen that patients get the lumps or bumps that is going to last very long? Is, is it a problem with my uh, injection technique or is it something I can avoid that? Yeah. I mean, using the Vitel light, which is what I typically use there, it's not as common as some of the alternative options that may be out there. Um, you know, I think certainly if there's this, the neck skin's thin, right. And so you do yeah. like, I tend to pull the skin back with my finger inject mm -hmm. and, and with the other hand and inject again. So you're deep enough. You don't want to be seeing your needle. You will see a little bit of that little lumping cobblestoning in the beginning, which I'll massage right away. Um, That's and I warn patients that they will, but my experience has been that most will, if you're aiming on the side of being a little bit deeper of anything integrate quite well. And it's not a long lasting thing. And I reassure okay. patients if there's one little lump that persists, you can adjust it, but it's not common in my experience if you're at the right plane. Okay. Okay. Uh, seen any, any complications such as vascular complications with skin booster? I have not, but again, I think Again, it's a hyaluronic acid based filler. It's theoretically possible. I think yes. because you're injecting in a more superficial plane in these little tiny micro droplets, the risk is lower than a traditional filler. It would be mm -hmm. my experience, right? You're not in a deep plane, you know, injecting a nose or glabella. Um, and, and so, and also the mechanism is such that you're doing tiny micro droplets, not a big bolus. So I think the risk okay. inherently is lower, but of course with anything, use yeah. The, yeah. the the practical tips to try and avoid complications yes. and know that it's possible. So the fact is it's a national technology. It's really good. It's a stabilized high gas. It's going to last very long. Uh, do you use a cannula as well for the skin booster? I do. I mean, not as commonly. I will sometimes, and this is just you know, my own experience and whatnot will sometimes layer a little bit more superficially with a cannula, particularly if I have an older patient, with a really deflated cutaneous upper lip, where I might be like layering a little bit with a cannula and then etching into the lines with a needle sometimes. So I will do a combination technique, but most commonly because I'm trying to get it into that dermal layer, 
for skin quality and for little etched in lines, most commonly I'm using a needle with it to do needle. that injection technique. And, and I think that just makes sure you're in the layer getting the best benefit um, for the patient. Yeah. And the last question, do you mix it with, I know there's an off labels question. Do you mix it with something else? Like you mix it with saline or toxins or something like that? I, I do not um, mix it. Um, I am not a mixer blender by nature, um, simply because of safety and concerns about rheology. And am I getting it? I, I like that, you know, within some of the Galderma ones we talked about, you've got a bit of a range. So you kind of have options for different locations. So I don't tend yep. to do any mixing with it. It's also already quite soft. So dilute, I don't think you would need to, to blend it um, further with saline too much, though, again, it is possible. Okay. But typically you're not doing that. I'm not, no. Okay. Yeah, I don't see any other questions here. Let me just double check one more time. Uh, so there's just a, uh, somebody's asking about is this uh, webinar is recorded? Yes, it is recorded. So we're going to send this uh, webinar to all the premium members of the Canadian Board of Aesthetic Medicine. I'm sure that everybody is very, very interested because we got, the, but we, uh, you know, we have the, at the same time, we have also our aesthetic congress as well. So that uh, some of our students, they didn't have any chance to be on the both of the webinars, but we're going to send a video recorded upon to all of the members. Thank Great. you again. Uh, thank you, Galderma, to uh, Shauna for arranging this webinar today. Again, Katie, it was, it was awesome. It was perfect. I'm hoping that we can uh, ask you to be part of our faculty member in future and asking you to uh, help us you know, with your knowledge and your experience with our uh, members. And again, thank you again. Shauna, do you want to add something? Yeah, sure. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Dr. Blesney, for your time um, on the weekend. Uh, really, really enjoyed the presentations that you've put together for everyone. Um, and yeah, just thank you again. Yeah, thanks. Thanks to Galderma and the conference organizer. It's been amazing. And I'm excited to kind of continue to tune in. So thank you, everyone. Enjoy, I guess, your day.